Hello and welcome to Jams. Welcome to a few things you didn't know about Fallout. So, number one, if you've got a favourite weapon, some of us like to rename those. So, you can do that on the crafting bench if you just rename. However, you can use HTML in your renaming. You can't do any flashing text or any coloured text, uh, but you can do bold, uh, and I quite like doing italics. I find this helps me when I'm selling items to vendors not to accidentally sell my primary weapon. I mean, you think the heart and the star would be a big enough giveaway, but it's also nice that it's um, differently named. If you put a, uh, a small hyphen in the front of the name, it will actually move it to the very, very top of your inventory list, so it makes life a bit easier as well. So there we go, I've changed the name. It's now in italics. Uh, the only bad thing is when I pop it up in the favorites, it is still named there as um, including the HTML tags. However, if you go to the Pip-Boy and when you're talking to vendors, it's just labeled up as the name in italics. So, have you ever wondered about the defense of your settlement? Yeah, moving beyond auto turrets and artillery and the like. You've got the heroes knocking about in some of them. Um, there's Preston, Strong's about here somewhere, Piper, and there's dog meat behind that picket fence. But the average settler I just want to trade a few tends things. to be equipped okay. with a pipe pistol that is pretty naff. So what you can do is you can give them a better weapon. Equipping this weapon and only one round of ammunition for that weapon, in this case 556, five, um, counts in their inventory as they have an unlimited supply of this ammunition, which is really useful in a game like this where ammo is quite short. Uh, oh, this doesn't apply to mini nukes. If you give them a fat man, they have X amount of mini nukes and that's it. So you can further increase the defensive hey. capability of your settlers, particularly the hero ones, by telling them if they're your current companion to climb inside power armor. If you then dismiss them, they'll retain this power armor. Um, you'll notice that I'm putting Piper, my current companion, inside an empty shell of armor. That's because I don't want her to damage any of the external parts, but I do want her to have the increased strength and stats so she can just carry more and goes down in battle less. So, have you ever noticed how loud the generators appear to be? And when you get them in a suitable quantity, as you often need for a large settlement, like the one I've got going on here, you need quite a few generators. And if you put them all in one place, they can be very noisy. Well, if you turn it off, and then back on again, it cycles the sound in which the generator is using while it's running. There are about seven or eight of these and you can fiddle the generators so that they all move to a quieter setting. Or you can do as I've done and do that and then move them all to a building at the other end of the village that you're never going to go anywhere near. I hate this guy. This guy is always sleeping in my bed. You know the one in the reconstructed house that I built when I was grieving over my wife? What a dick. So, if you go up to him, you can assign him other beds, in the same way that you assign any other kind of resource. This means that he will continue farming his crops, as he's doing here outside my reconstructed house, looking after my vegetable garden, and then, when it gets night time, he won't go inside and rudely sleep in my bed. It's also useful if you assign all your settlers uh, assigned sleeping spaces, it means you know where you're going to find Preston and some of the hero characters at night. Okay, so, you know when you find an edge of the map, a little sign pops up and it says you can't go this way and it stops you from walking. Well, the southern edge of the map doesn't really have that, because the southern edge of the map doesn't really exist at all. You can move beyond it, and in fact, later on in the game, the game does take you to an area outside of this map. Um, this area is called the Glowing Sea. It's really, really irradiated. In fact, this area of the map is the area that was bombed right in the beginning of the game during the Great War. Um, the land formations that you're seeing, in fact, one of the craters that you see are formed by the atomic blast that you see in the opening of the game right before you go inside the vault. So, this area is not an area I recommend you going without power armor. Um, and at, at this point, I'm wearing XO1 leaded power armor to increase my radiation resistance. I'm still taking some radiation despite that. It doesn't do a great deal of damage, but outside the power armor, you're absolutely screwed. You know, unless you've got the world supply of Rad X and Rad Away and Stim Packs. Um, to make this area even worse, there are quite a few nasty um, things hanging about. Namely, 
death claws. There are quite a few of them, and in all sorts of ridiculous varieties. Um, and, you know, albinos, matriarchs, alphas, and a couple of chameleon ones knocking about as well. So, you ever wanted to build something, something that isn't really allowed by physics? Things like floating platforms? Well, you can do that. One of the easiest ways to do it is to build uh, prefabricated units, something like this. Um, or there are some blocks which you can build. Um, you can stack them, and then you can build off the sides of the top one. Or, more commonly I prefer to do is you just put the one down, and then build off that. You put floors and roofs in, and then you can delete the supporting structures, and lo and behold, as a floating platform. So let's say you want to build somewhere slightly more impossible, you know, on a ridiculous rock formation, halfway up a tree, you know, just somewhere where the game doesn't want you to build. If you can get there with power armor, you can build there. You can build off the power armor. So one of the things I like doing is getting lights and lighting up trees or ridiculous rock formations that normally places you wouldn't be able to build. So you can see here, you can just place it right on the armor. So I'll just put one here right over the entry hatch just to just to show you and you can hook that all up and best thing about this you haven't lost the armor you can just get into it like the lights aren't even there even though I put one right on the entry hatch it's a bit buggy because I've done that but you know. and you step away and the lights are there The only thing is, is if you do want to edit the light, there isn't really an option to do that. You can't change the orientation in any way. If you do it wrong the first time on the power armor, that's it. You just have to start again. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is um, Piper and her power armor. So let's say you wanted to get out of this. So normally you want to take something or give something to Piper you can just go and trade and take it but the power armor isn't there or the power armor frame in this case isn't there hey piper so what you can do is through the talk options having got through the uh, you know the friendly bits where she gives you bubble gum you can open up a talk option which is exit power armor which she will then do so despite Piper having done lots and lots of running around you can see here that the fusion core actually has only lost one cell of charge the NPCs seem to use it less than you do. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye.